Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hello everyone, Basil Chapman here live from Dorset, England. Uh, we're coming to you with the Dow down 140 points at 33,200. Uh, you see this left side chart, the daily chart shows you the H pattern. Remember the dreaded H? It says that at any point this week, if the Dow closes under 32,937, it could go quite a bit uh, deeper. The weekly chart's got this lowercase M-shaped formation, still holding very well. The 9 pin moving average is, whereas in the daily, it's been pink since I left uh, last week. Uh, this is still holding green. The MACD is a little bit weak, and the stochastic's down under 80%, but so far, the technicals are not bad. And the monthly chart, that's going to be really important. What happens in the month of May? Because we challenged the Chapel Wave inside track repellent zone. We haven't broken above it. And now look at the S&P. The S&P has a different chart formation. Remember, look, here's the daily Dow with the pink nine-period moving average. Look at the S&P. Still green, holding very nicely, down only 9.5 at 41.26. Kind of going sideways. Yes, there is an arch formation here with an H pattern extant. But most importantly, the MACD has turned down. The stochastic's way down 58% on balance volumes weak. And yet the 9, as long as it holds above the 14, is giving you a bit of a cushion as support. And you can see the weekly chart. Remember, I, I drew this in. I said, I would not be surprised. I would be away, and I wouldn't be surprised if over the, I, I didn't anticipate that I'd actually have free time today. Uh, and the moment I knew I had free time, I, I, of course, I've been online a lot, of, uh, doing all sorts of things. But I said, I think I can do the show. I'd like to do the show. Why? This is a really important moment. Uh, you know, we talk about compromise uh, between the two parties. Doesn't look to me like there's going to be some compromise uh, by, by the chart formations. It says we could be in for a little bit of a weakness here. So if you're looking at the weekly chart, look at this rectangle formation. <clears throat> so I think that the the, um, the S&P is stuck between, at this at moment, I'd say 4180s to support that must hold in the 4050 area. If it takes that out, 4035 is a 200 period moving average. It hasn't been there since it broke above back in late March. So that's going to be very important. Now, this is going to be fascinating. Why? Because the QQQ, the NDX 100, trading at 327.14. Now, I used to have a license number, 327. All right. Um, uh, it's up 40 cents. In leg D, remember the Chapman Wave we always, when we get to a G, we always say, be prepared that this G could be a G slash C, and therefore it could very quickly go to a D within a bar or two. So it's done that. It's gone over the 327.17 level from a few days ago. Today's high is 327.98. It's showing good strength. And if you talk about good strength, it's walked the nine period moving average. It's done really nicely. Nine is way over the 14, price is way over the nine. Uh, the uh, Both of them are positive with the MACD positive. So the Castix holding flat at 93%. That's really good. On balance volume is a little bit weaker. And where's the relative? Yep, the relative strength is still holding very nicely at about 61% of the daily. Now the week, I need to expand this just a little bit. Let's see if I can do that. I've got to go slowly here because online you never know what can happen, um, especially with, what is it, 3,000 miles? No, it's yeah, more than 3,000 miles away. So what we're looking at is, the QQQ weekly chart has made this beautiful, it made an H pattern successful. It went to a cup pattern and it's rallying very sharply. It's above the rectangle that I said it could be in for a little while and it's gone above that. Not much, but it's gone above it. And the monthly chart is really impressive. Leg A, gray leg A. MACD has not yet crossed positive in the monthly chart. Stochastic is at 48%. Not great. On balance volume is improving. Nine pre moving average. Whew, if we keep this, if somehow or other we get this rotational correction here. It just I had said the reason why to subscribe to Open Call, we don't want to go short, even though the technicals have said that it, the, with the pink nine pre moving average, we should be short. 
I can see buying coming in, little swathes of buying, and I can see the same thing on the selling side. It's really um, a couple of individual stocks in the in the um, Invesco QQQ Trust series. That's the NDX 100 are really helping. And here you are, the monthly chart, the nine period moving average is very close to turning up. It's still got a whole month to go. We haven't. We're only halfway through the month. MACD still has a long way to go to be paused. If in June. These two, uh, in the, these tools, the nine over the fourteen, or well, nine under the fourteen, goes over the fourteen, turns green, and the MACD turns positive. I think that's going to be very good, and it'll be good leadership. I want to see the Qs come back into leadership position, maybe, maybe with the Qs leading the S P and then the Dow. The Dow's head is turned; it just needs more of a digestive phase. So that's the QQQ. I'll give you the numbers to look at over the next going into. I'll be back on Monday, but let's uh, let's just say between now and then, three twenty. It's a three twenty six sixty nine down eleven cents now. I. I would say that if there's a close under 319 between now and Monday, that digestive phase will increase and then you'll get more weakness in the down the S&P. Um, the upside, well, it's open, but in the upside, 334 has been the target for a long time. I'm not sure when we get there. We've got another, uh, we've already passed the midway point. So now we have to use other techniques. And that says about the second week of June, uh, if this slides a little bit further now than 3 uh, 34 could take a, a couple of weeks to get there. I want you to just show you the IWM. The IWM is the Russell 2000, and I want to go to the semis. I mustn't forget. So you can see the weakness just sideways with lower highs and lower lows, and then it goes uh, into a narrower range. Uh, but that weekly chart just says it's really tough for the ISIS Russell 2000 ETF small caps to, to find some upside um a propensity to move more than once to the up, so one bar to the upside and continue, it just doesn't, it's not able to do that. But look at the SMHs. This is the semiconductor index. Semiconductor index trading right now up five cents at 126.17. This is fascinating because it's gone to a leg B. Look how many gray A's there were. Now this should be a gray B because the stochastic hasn't gone to 80% yet. But it's a, it's a really good sign. I've been waiting to see the semiconductors start to lead the way up. They are as green uh, rather than blue. And the weekly chart says, hey, what are you worrying about? I'm just walking the 9 period and 14 period moving averages. But the monthly chart says we haven't broken out the resistance. But it's going to be great. Someone said something about MU. Let me just check. MU, oh, very nice action. Very choppy. This is a Bart Simpson hairstyle. This is peak C. Then it stalls and goes to C1, C2, then it goes to a D and an E. So this is a leg C in the weekly. Yes, this is very nice to see some leadership in the semiconductors, but it is very individual. And I would just say, so I'm pleased to say that the semiconductors have come off the 118 low of the 27th of April. They've already gone up eight points to 126. That's much better action that you would expect if the general market was going to remain weak. Uh, what we're looking at then is uh, I want you to also look at gold. <clears throat> gold is down 12 at 20, 2010. And you can see we've got a peak D. This is a, a pattern that I've looked at so many times. Oh, we've got to break. We'll talk a little bit more about gold and silver when we get back. And then a couple of uh, uh, stocks we want to look at is Home Depot. Got smacked today. Uh, Target we want to look at. And Walmart will be back in a month. That's what happened. Surprise for me. Morning in from Dorset, England, UK. I'll be back in a month. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
or daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, before I forget, I had a question about I I O N C. I O N C uh did I write that I O C N maybe? No. I O I O N Q. I O N Q, I bet that's what it was. Yeah, there it is. Uh, oh, fabulous move. At 7.52, it's up uh, 17 cents, up 2.32%. I have to consider that this is, it really has all the characteristics of a brand new buy mode. That was a peak F. Look, you pull back. You went under the nine period, moving under the 200 period. MACD was weak. Stochastic was weak. This really looks like a buy mode. So I'm going to put that in right now, even if it becomes choppy, leg B. And I would suggest to you that this has a chance to get, oh, it's already gone halfway into that wick. So let me talk about about this in terms of purely technicals here. This is A. I, I, I do have to write in because it didn't take out the left side low of P, a, a trough to start the peak A. I do have no choice but to put in just so that we know that there's a chance um, a B, but I'm actually going to put a B slash G. That's a little unusual, but it's just telling you that I, th I believe everything about it says it's a G because I need to see how it closes and what happens the next two days because if it goes under that peak F at about 7.38 or something like that, um, that says, oops, be careful. You've already made your legs see in the weekly chart. Wow, this looks very good. I-O-N-Q. Uh, this is called I-O-N-Q Inc. I can't see what it, uh, what it does. Uh, but all I can say is this, if you look at that candle right here, the candle of in 2022, that was the week of the 19th of August at 8.61, if it starts to trade for a day, oh, it started to do that today. If I, I'm going to make it a little different to what I usually say. I'm going to say if it can close any time this week above 7.52 it says 7.56 right now if we can close I'd like to say two days I don't want to this, you know it could have a pop and then pull back I'd like to say two out of the next four sessions if we can close over 7.52 there's a real good chance this is a leg B it should still then go to a C and a D and then there's a chance that it can touch the high that was made oh you'd love that wouldn't you Dan, 19th of August, the high was 861. 
Uh, that's a point and a, a, a 1.10 right from here. That's a big ask, but that's what I'd look at. Most importantly, over the next three sessions, it mustn't close below six. Six a six sixty eight. If it closes under sixty sixty eight, it's just stuck in a range again. So let's go back to what we were looking at. We were looking at gold. Let me just go to GDX first because I did the gold in the market update. See, this is the thing that I'm worried about. When I was looking at this uh, the last couple of days, I thought to myself, this is the pattern that I talk about all the time: the rectangle pattern that retests with a cup formation the upper part of the range this made a fractional new high the high that was made on the 13th of april at 35 uh, 36.10 pull back sharply to the 33 uh, 30s and then it retested it went right back to the level uh, on the 4th of may of 36.26 uh, what was that 16 cents higher so that has to be a peak f but the tacticals were very weak. That always makes me a, a, a little concerned if I'm thinking bullish because that's where you're supposed to get very cautious. Why? Because you need to see, is there going to be a rectangle test uh, of the midpoint? And then if you take it out, how do you test the left side low? In other words, the trough at 33, right there, at 33.06. That was the 27th of April. And now what you've got is the sine wave that goes cup, arch, trying to make a cup. Is that going to fail? This is a G slash C in the weekly chart. And you've got almost this pattern that I call the double hump of the MACD. We're on the right side. If it starts to fail, you've got to be careful right here. So I'm just suggesting that gold and especially the GDX right now is a good example of what I'm looking at. The pattern I'm saying is look on the daily chart. Look how it deflected lower right here, right there. The um, the MACD is weak. It didn't go over 80%. It went under that in the 70s, and then it failed, and now it's at 23%. The on-balance volume is not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad at all. And the nine-period moving average yesterday flipped to negative, and now it's in an S, meaning sell signal just on that particular index. But I would say at this point, I have to wait for the day's close, but I think I'm getting a sell signal, not a sell mode, just a sell signal. We had one before, and it got changed by the, the rally. Now it's coming back again, but this time the tech tools are much weaker. And if you put it together with now, I can go back to gold. The GC, which is the continuous contract, hasn't flipped to negative. I wouldn't be surprised in the next two days it flips to negative. That says the low that was made in the continuous contract. I'm going to give you a general number. Instead of saying 1982, uh, 1982, I'm going to go to 1980. If there is a close under 1980, the reason why I'm saying that is not only will it impact the daily chart, but I suspect that the weekly chart will start to see uh, a little bit of weakness that it hasn't shown. So far, it's only shown strength. And that's telling me there is still very good support in the uh, in the gold contract <clears throat> between anywhere above 1950. That's a really good support area. But if it actually does crack 1970, 19. 80, let's, just be, let's just say 1978. If it cracked 1978 on a closing basis, it says gold is in for a bit of a spill in time and price. Right now, it's just time, not so much price. Look at silver. That did take out the cup formation. Remember, I spoke about this about two weeks ago. I said, whoops, you've got the MACD deflecting lower. You've got the stochastic not even going over 80%. On balance volume has been good, but it's starting to pull back. But that nine only recently, two, three days ago, flipped to uh, a negative. And that monthly chart says we've got a little double top there. Just be really careful. So I'm saying that the metals, gold and silver, I, I, I'm going to include platinum just for the moment. I haven't looked at it for a few days. Platinum, yes, also has this double top pattern, holding much better. But platinum at 1,073, down one and a half today. If it starts to trade below 1,036, it says, oops, this is now included in that whole uh, that whole bunch. I also want you to go to um, the dollar. The dollar is attempting to rally. Uh, it's now down just three ticks at one or two point four. See, I remember way back about a, a year. It's probably about a year ago. I said, let's start thinking of those. You remember Dolly, Bondi, etc. All the nicknames I give to those um, the indexes that we look at. I said, let's think of them separately. 
um, the, the VIX index hasn't done what you, the market hasn't done what you really should expect when the VIX index is so low. It should have screamed upside, but it has. The market has held well. So you've got to sort of separate there. Gold and dollar. The dollar's been really weak. Gold's held very well. Um, so you've got to, I'm saying that try to separate them. And bonds, when bonds come down, uh, the market usually goes up because it, when bonds go up, that means yields are coming down, and that means the market often goes up together. So all of things are kind of separated at this particular point. Let's do them separately. The dollar's holding well. This particular pattern says there could be an attempt to get to the 103s. If there is a close above 103.80, that's something different. That really says dollar can actually, the weekly chart could have a little bit more of a gain, and that will weaken the uh, gold. Whoa, time flies when you're having fun. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chap, Tiger Ditch Sour, live from Dorset, United Kingdom. And I'll be back in a moment. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. A couple of things I want to look at. Look on the one. I'm looking at too much of this. On the one minute chart, made that TK on the We turned down when I drawn it in the 10 minute chart. You had a move that went up 
sharply from the 1335 level. Where to? Do you see this dashed line here? Let me just open this up a little bit. This dashed line. Well, this goes back weeks. I think it might be maybe three weeks, could even be four weeks, where I said the 4148 level is going to be really important. And there's the dashed line. I like to just keep it in. And we went right to it. We went 4150, and then we pulled back. And I put in an X here saying there should be a time sequence between the 10-minute bars, these bars here, and coming down. Well, it got to within a point and a half. It took a few bars, and then it hit it exactly. Went under it. We made a low in the 4126 uh, area, 7 area, and now we're trying to rally. And one of the things that I said to subscribers is I believe that what we're looking at here is a kind of a, a wait-and-see attitude in the market. But while it's doing that, you're starting to see strength in some sectors and some stocks and a lot of weakness in others. For instance, and now I can, uh, did I finish that? No, I didn't. Let me just finish. So that was the dollar we were looking at here is the euro, euro dollar currency pair. Look, there's your peak D. So that says you're coming back. You've got an arch formation. In fact, right now it can change the plus sign to a down arrow. There it is. Down arrow. A couple up. There we are. And what do we get? We get the arch formation at a peak D coming back down and says a real good chance in the next couple of days that we will test right here. And the monthly, the weekly chart in the middle here is still very strong. Monthly chart is still not bad. So this is the level we're looking at here on the euro dollar. That's 1.0831. And if that's taken out, the next low will be 1.0788. Uh, all right, I could do a time sequence. I could draw it in. It doesn't matter. It's just that's the way it's looking right now. You and this weakness um, is, is coinciding with the dollar pull. The dollar trying to rally, but most importantly, you've got gold not weak but weakening, and that's the issue. And yeah, you've got the um, U.S. dollar, Japanese yen daily chart. Look, it made a cup formation. It's trying very hard to make a cup and handle. Not one of my favorite patterns. Why? Because it usually does go above, and then it comes back into the handle. So let you time it perfectly in this area right here for the rally. Uh, you kind of lose out a lot. So 137.91 should be the upside um, key key level to monitor. Let me do this. I just wanted to show you the TLT. Remember what I said? That there's a real good chance <clears throat> that we'll be stuck in this range for quite a while. And that uh, as we get into the uh, latter weeks of, of May, will we be in the 106s or will it be lower? But the fact is that we are at 102.29 down 90 cents. We've taken out the daily uh, – Rectangle formation low, and now the next low is down the 101 area. We're at 102.28, and the most important thing is that we're in a rectangle formation. That's what we discussed months ago. I said there's a chance we're going to be stuck in a, in a 109, 109 high and a 99 low for the um, TLT, the ICS 20-year Treasury bond ETF, for quite a while. Yes, you can trade it in between, but this is the bigger picture. And you can see there's even an arch formation in the monthly chart. So question came in. Where did it go? Question came in. Could I look at um, Home Depot? So Home Depot, I had this as an arch. Where is it? Arch formation. Oh, perfect. Here's the arch. I drew this in last week when we were talking. I said Home Depot made a peak C, but it looks like it's more like a C1, C2 failure pattern, and that if it pulls back, and that it was in the 300s at the time, if it pulls back and goes under 288 support, we could get a full arch formation, and then I'm not sure if I did it at that time or I did it over the uh, last week, this past weekend, but I drew in the arch formation with the travel wave inside wedge target re uh, a support line. It hit it to the day. Bing! And it broke under it. The low today is 277. It's trading down 6 at 282. So it's fulfilled the arch formation. And that weekly chart makes it really important that over the next two weeks, there's a close, three weeks. I'll give it three weeks, but it should be two weeks. A close over 279.93. Because if it does that, it says, okay, you can have a decent bounce now. But if it closes under that, it says, uh oh, watch that monthly chart. And that's what I mean by the split personality. Let's just see what Builder is doing. B L D R. Uh, Builder is still climbing. This is still a leg F to the upside, maybe a peak F today. 
Oh, my goodness. Isn't that an amazing move? This is Builder's first source thing, building materials, manufacturer components, legacy in the monthly. And that's what I'm saying. The Fed, how do they make decisions under these conditions? You've got these stocks going to the, to the moon, and yet you've got a Home Depot going south. What's this? Is it the moon? To the Arctic, Antarctic. Anyway, you've got Home Depot plunging to the downside. Uh, Walmart, WT comes out. I think it's this week sometime. When is that? Walmart. Um, I'm not sure when Walmart is. It today and tomorrow? Next day? I thought Walmart was coming out. WMT. WMT. Oops. Hello. Anybody home there? Oh, oh don't fail me now. In the middle of a show, does anybody... Uh, this is England. You've got to be polite. There it is. Peak D. Walmart just says it's in a range. It's double topping here. It could have a bit of a pullback. I would just say if Walmart trading at 151, if the earnings come out any day this week, I thought I saw somewhere that it did. But if earnings come out, it better hold 148. Closes under 148. That's a problem for Walmart, at least for a little bit. It goes into the rectangle formation. Target is the other one. Target is trading at? Down a dollar at 159.52. Uh, also, the same double top. Oh, it was the wrong chart. Uh, peak D is pulling back sharply from there in the weekly chart. Yeah, Walmart looks to me like it, it better be a very pleasant surprise because if it doesn't get from 159 right now to the 162, 163 area over the next week, but it says takes out 153 support, that 150 level is going to be <laughs> very important to hold. Next thing we want to look at, I just want to see if there was a question here. I think there was. Uh, let me just go to this tiger, tiger chat. I saw something here. Uh, could I show? I did that. I did that. Could I show something? Oh dear, I will do it. Oh dear, I'll be back there for D in a moment. TLT diving. Yep, TLT diving. Um, talking about BLTs. No, it's not the time for that. Uh, UNG, that's what I want you to look at. Sorry, I forgot what it was. So UNG, I haven't looked at that for a couple of days. UNG, this is this is the United Gas Fund. Oh, very nice. There's the it's the exact opposite of some of the charts we're looking at. Remember, they made a top, then they made a cup formation, and then they tested the the top and they came back. This one's made a bottom in the cup for, in the arch formation, and it went under six point two seven, but within three days. Yep, within three days, on the third day, closed above it. That says it could rally, but it's probably going to stall under this high here of the arch formation on the 18th of April, 7.30. If this, if, if UNG actually closed, the weekly will improve a lot. If UNG can close above 7.72. If UNG can close above 7.72, um, it doesn't. I'm not giving you time. I'm just saying within the next week, any day this week, over the next week, I would say that that is really nice action. Oh, that's that I'll be back in a moment. Uh, the Dow is. I can't see where the Dow is, so I can't give you the up right now. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, hi, folks. We're back. Basil Stafford calling uh, in from uh, from Dorchester area in Dorset, United Kingdom. Uh, we're looking at peak A, peak B, leg C in the advanced micro devices daily chart, trying to test the left side high of March. So this is what I'm talking about. The rotation through the different groups is just fascinating. And if you're able to get it right, you can just ignore the general market because uh, this is helping the semiconductors, advanced micro devices, up 4.32 at 101.71. Very nice action. Just underneath that previous high, that doji candle high at PT, where it slumped from the 101 area down into the 80, down to 81 or so. And now the weekly chart is almost going to go to a leg E, the monthly chart of leg C. This is to me is really important. That's the reason why I said to subscribers before I left to my opening call, I said, I don't know if I want to, I, I don't, although I, I see the potential for a short position, it is so selective and the buying just suddenly comes in, selling comes in. Uh, I think that the overall consensus for me in the, looking at the charts says that there's weakness and that there's limited upside, but the time at the time, and I might say even now, I think there's still limited rotational support, um, so that we've got more uh, lower highs and low lows, but not much lower highs and much lower lows. I just think at this particular point, we might find that if the market takes any news, any political news negatively uh, this evening or into tomorrow, and I got a feeling that's a good possibility that we could come down. But if you're in something like the SMHs right now, where uh, it's holding well up 49 cents at 126.63, there's a little bit of comfort there. But if the general market starts to pull back sharply, it'll take these down with it. Uh, as I was talking, there was a question that came up, and now I can't remember it. I'll try to – oh, yes. I wanted to see what the IAI is doing right now. It's down. So this is important to me. The ISIS broker dealer and security ETF trading at 86.78, down 64 cents. You see how in this rectangle starting to make from that peak D, making lower lows and lower highs. And there's an H pattern in the weekly chart. If I put it together with the XLF and the XLF with the yields going up like this, should be doing well, but it's not. It's down 21 cents at 31.95. The S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, dreaded H in the monthly chart, dreaded H in the weekly chart. And so far, it's held the H pattern in the daily chart shorter term, but at, at, uh, 30, at 31, if there is even a tick, under 31 in the next, uh, what's today? Today it's Tuesday. Oh, it's a whole week to go by, by Friday. That's just going to suggest you've got to be careful here. And as I say, individually, that's one thing. 
Uh, oh, I didn't look at crude oil. Crude oil was holding well uh, earlier in, uh, last week, and then it started to turn down. So it's down 15 cents at 70.96. So if I go to Exxon and these multinational, you can see this 119.92 peak that was made at the end of April, beginning of May. Uh, we're now dreaded H pattern went underneath the left side low, went underneath the 200 period moving average down 2.21 at 102.86. I would suggest to you that this is a lot more vulnerable. Exxon Mobil, the multinational, it is a peak E in the monthly chart if there's no new high. But look at this left side, right side comparison in the cup formation from the 119.63 high of 2023 earlier this uh, in, in March, I think it was, to the 119.92 uh, just uh, three weeks ago. And now there's a chance that if it closes under 95 in May, then crude oil just for the moment is kind of going to be under pressure and just out of, it's not going to be a help. Uh, to the overall market. And you can see uh, Chevron uh, Corporation CVX is down three at 154. Syntas, I want you to look at that. Syntas held really well. I did not update this. This should be um, an E slash C right here. Doji Candle, new all-time high three days ago, pulling back five, almost, uh, almost seven points. At 462.15, there's your little double top that I'm looking at very closely. Can you imagine Syntas? What the, what, what's the Fed doing here? You've got Syntas, uniforms, overalls, and this is hotels, restaurants, etc. all-time highs. <laughs> what decisions are they going to make? It's really tough. That's number one. Now, other thing is, under these conditions, when you, when you talk about the budget, um, you can see that there's a lot to discuss in, discuss in the sense that, let me just get this right there, in the sense that if you look at a Berkshire Hathaway, BRK dot B, and this is a person who's involved in everything in the economy, American economy. And if you look at the chart, the fact that it made a new recovery high just recently, the all-time high is up in the 360 level. And it's trading here at 323. So that's about 40 points, 37 points. That, that's, you know, 10%. That's a pretty decent pullback. But look at the, the way it's held so nicely. You can even make a case that it's almost like a, an oval pattern. Not quite, but like I'm saying you could make that case. So how Berkshire Hathaway does, because this is not, they call it a financial, but it's really not a financial. It's really the U.S. economy. This could be a fund on its own, Berkshire Hathaway B, Buffett Businesses. So I'm watching this very closely because if in May, uh, BRK B shares – trade, and I mean trade, I mean on a weekly basis, in other words, a few days, closes under 315, that just says now you've got to be somewhat careful because that really is the bigger part of the economy. I had a couple of figs. I had a question about figs. I had this on my list way back. So figs is making it made a new recovery high. Figs is uh, surgical, figs ink, surgical garb. Oh, why did that plus sign get in there? Okay, let me just get rid of that. Yeah, so that's surgical garb. Uh, probably garb is not the word, but that's what I typed in here. And, and it had a beautiful run from the 550s to the 60s. I can't remember who. Someone asked me about it, and I said I'd look at it. So that's E. Okay. okay. It, it's doing really well. All I can say is that it's in an area, as I said before, some stocks in an area that is, I wouldn't say sacrosanct because obviously on the way down it wasn't before, but it's held really nicely. Trading at 822, made a high yesterday, just about just under 850. I like it very much. So where 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 should I add? Uh, I can't remember who asked me. I got it the other day. I didn't have a chance to do it. Obviously, I would say have patience, and let's just see how 750 is tested. Uh, 760, 770 to 750 is really your first key support level. And I think it will get there. Just have patience. This is one that I've had patience and therefore I haven't got it because I kept looking at it when it finally did move and moved really quickly. But I, I like it. I like I like its rhythm. But right now it might be a little tough to get because it can go a little higher, but I think it's going to consolidate in the mid-7s. So I'm just going to say rather handle the position you've got right now 
and not look to add. Just at this particular moment, question came in. Could I, where would I wrote it down? Uh, Baba. Okay. Alibaba. No, is this Alibaba? Yeah, Alibaba is trading down 19 cents at 88.15. <clears throat> I'm a little afraid of some of these Chinese stuff. Oh, we've got one more segment to go. Okay. I, I be careful of the, of the uh, Chinese stuff just in this particular moment. Uh, you can see what's happening. Look, even here, the FXI is stalling sideways. Just if you just look at trades, that's fine. But I can get back at How's it happening? TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, let me just uh, give you a little summation because I will not be back until uh, the weekend. So Monday, I'll be back in, my, in the saddle again. Um, I'm, I'm speaking to you from England, US, United Kingdom. We're down 216 in the Dow, 33,132. There's this H pattern that I'm rather worried about. If there, are, if there's a close at the uh, 32,860 level in the next couple of days, I think we're in for uh, a bumpy ride. And S and P right now, so the Dow really needs to get to the 33,700s. That's a really big ask at this particular point. Uh, the uh, S and P uh, 
S and P is trading. So the S and P down down two thirteen. S and P is trading down just fourteen. Not bad. And that's what I'm saying. So really, it's it's kind of a mixed market. And the S the S and P is weaker than the is stronger than the Dow. The Qs are stronger than the S and P. So if the S and P is able to get to forty one. It's at 41.22. If by Friday's close, the S&P is able to get to 41.57 or higher, that's very good action. If you ever saw us to trade in the 4,080s, uh, uh, I'd say be be careful. Looking at the QQQ, it's the NDX 100, trading very nicely. Leg D, up a dollar, 0 0.04 at 327.85. We saw what happened with uh, advanced micro devices and um, uh, Micron was also acting well. So uh, the SMHs, I like that the SMHs are running here. We should see something in the general market uh, because they usually help. We'll watch closely. But the QQQs has a key support in the 322 level. Close under that says that 318 level, 317. It's a really important support in May. Meantime, it's holding very nicely at 328. 334 was the left side target that I said should be hit sometime in summer. Oh, well, I'm going to wrap it up. Stay tuned. We've got Steve Rhodes coming up with great programming. And I will see you on Monday. This is coming Monday. And have a great week. And uh, thank you for being here. Check out both. It is better.